Good morning, church. It's Friday morning, and we want to go back to the same story we covered a little bit yesterday, and that is the story of Nicodemus and his rebirth. If you will, turn back to John chapter number 3. And in John chapter number 3, remember, Jesus has encountered a very self-righteous, good man, and a teacher in Israel, in fact, on the Sanhedrin, and he comes to Jesus, knowing Jesus is somebody special, sent from God, and Jesus immediately says, you need to be born again. And Nicodemus can't grasp that. He says, how can a man be born uh, when he's old? He can't go back into his mother's womb and come out again. And Jesus said, listen, that which is of the flesh is flesh. There, there's an earthly birth, but there's also a spiritual birth. If you're born of water, then you, you have a fleshly birth body and that's what we have now we we all been born of the water and then there's the spiritual birth that every person needs and that's because we're sinners and so jesus is trying to explain this and so in verse number nine nicodemus answered and says how can these things be how is it a person can be born again now i want you to notice how jesus deals with this he doesn't give him more information that he needs at this point because the gospel is not going to be clearly uh, delineated until at, after the death, burial, and resurrection. But in verse number 10, Jesus said, Are you a teacher in Israel? You don't understand these things? Most I surely, I, I say to you, we speak what we know, we testify of what we've seen, but you don't receive our witness. Now, if I've told you of earthly things, and you cannot believe those things, you don't understand those things, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Then here he goes. No one has ever ascended into heaven. In other words, nobody is ever going to get to heaven on their own. Nobody is going to ascend into heaven. But he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man, who is in heaven. So the reason why a person can be born again is because God descended down from heaven to the earth. And he's called the Son of Man. God became man. You say, well, that's not clearly spelled out, is it? Well, just look at it. No one's going to make it into heaven. No one's going to pull up, go up to heaven and bring salvation down, make themselves right before God. God came down and he became the Son of Man. He descended from heaven and became the Son of Man. And then notice in verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have ever or eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So is he the Son of Man, or is he the Son of God? Yes. And so even though the theology here is not clear in some part, it's clear enough for us to get because we can look back upon this. The Son of God, God, became flesh, and he became the Son of Man. But he's also the Son of God. And he talks about, uses the, both of those terms. For God did not send his son. So this is God's son into the world to condemn the world. And so God has to come down and become a man. But then he gives us a hint. And that man, as taking on flesh, having flesh and blood just like us, then as Moses was lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now later on in the Gospel of John, uh, John would, uh, Jesus would explain this again. For you say, as the Son of Man must be lifted up. If, if the Son of Man's lifted up, he'll draw all men unto himself. What is he talking about? Being lifted up. Crucifixion. The crucifixion. How is it that a person can be born again? Well, they need God's Spirit to come into their heart. Well, how can Holy God come into the life of someone who is sinful? He can't. And so sin must be dealt with. So God sent his son into the world. Then God allowed his son to, to live an entire life without sin. And then he was lifted up on a cross. 
As I like to say, he wasn't in heaven when he died. He wasn't on the earth. He was raised up above the earth. He was suspended between heaven and earth as the God-man, the mediator between God and man. And because Jesus was on that cross, God put the sin of the world, because Jesus had no personal sin, upon Jesus. And he, Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That makes it possible because Jesus paid the price for our sin, if we will repent and turn to Jesus, seeking the salvation that he and he alone can provide, that God gives us his Holy Spirit. That is salvation. That's what it means to be born again. And all these people around the world have no real concept of what it means to be born again. They are as religious as is Nicodemus. They know their Bible in some part. They do religious duties. And again, 